first we need to understand that there are leaders at different realms of life in different areas of our life that there are leaders at home that you know um, the parents should be the leader at home and how to be a good leader and there are different styles of leadership at home and in the place of work so if you have a secular job uh, how do you have leadership in the place of work and in a church how to have good leadership in a church and also in friendship so in friendship so do you have uh, how do you have leadership in a in a in a friendship how to lead your uh, influence your friends there are you know uh, is inevitable that always it, it will be true that there will be uh, someone leading other people in friendship okay so uh, we need to understand that in different areas of our life that we have leadership and then we'll talk about different styles of leadership okay now here I'll talk about <clears throat> eight styles okay eight styles of leadership first is the visionary leader leadership what does it mean is what it means is that the leader have visions and he wants to inspire uh, the followers to have the same vision and achieve certain goals okay and then transactional leadership uh, this kind of leaders they uh, it's like uh, having transactions with his um, followers that he will tell his followers okay if you do this and I will do this for you uh, for instance this happens in a, a place of work very often when the, um, the boss says that okay when you do this job I'll pay you certain amount of money I'll give you uh, uh, that kind of uh, reward to you when you uh, do the certain kind of work and the charismatic leadership means that um, that people really have they have charisma that means they have a, a personality that inspire people that makes people want to do something they influence other people uh, that you know uh, that happens very often in uh, church leadership that if the pastor has strong char charisma that he has he can influence that he can influence the, the followers and then transformational leadership that means that he would transform he would transform the the followers that he would transform he'll train the leader uh, the followers he will help them to uh, ch uh, the life to change now this happens a lot in the church that we transform the followers the transform the spiritual life so that is transformish, uh, tr transformational transformational leadership and then autocratic leadership this is uh, authoritarian that the leader just tell uh, the followers what to do and a bureaucratic leadership means that they follow the uh, the, the rules of an organization they follow rules uh, they, f they have a set of rules a protocol for of the organization that people need to follow and democratic leadership that means he would uh, gather the, the 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 opinions of people to gather their opinions so that uh, they will f follow that um, they would you know that they arrive at a certain conclusion by voting or by discussing that they arrive at a certain uh, uh, agreement and then they follow that and then least fair leadership it's freestyle totally free it's up to the followers what to do okay now let me explain this uh, related to church in a church okay in a church if the leader has visionary leadership that means he he has a um, 
a vision for the church or vision for the ministry. And then he wants to give them vision to the followers. And trans transactional leadership, that means uh, the pastor will say, okay, if you do this, then I will give you this. If you uh, do certain things, then I'll give you certain reward or you can be uh, promoted to this position in a church. That's transactional leadership. And charismatic leadership, that means a leader who, who has a lot of charisma to influence the people, that these people follow and are, uh, they've, uh, they see the, the, uh, the charisma, the zeal, uh, the attractiveness of the leader, and they follow the leader. And transformational uh, leadership, that means he would transform the followers so that they would f follow Jesus and follow the direction of the church. Autocratic leadership, that means the, the leader, uh, they set rules. They want the people to follow him totally, that the people are to just to obey him. And then bureaucratic leadership, that means uh, that he has rules of the organization, that you follow these rules, follow these procedures. Whatever change, you need to have meetings and agreement to have this bureaucratic leadership. And democratic leadership, that means the church leaders and the people, they will vote on certain things and ask the people's opinion, uh, uh, how to direct the church, how to, uh, how to bring growth to the church. That's democratic. And least uh, would be that the leader would just let the people follow, do, do whatever, whatever they want to do. Okay, now, I, I want to say that uh, many leaders have a few of this uh, lead leadership style. Sometimes they don't just follow one style. They might follow a different style, okay? Now, in a church leadership, there could be this different styles. And then I'll talk about, how about uh, at home? Okay, at home will be like the, the parents have certain visions, like they want the children to become doctors or... Uh, have a certain profession and uh, uh, or they want the family to do achieve certain things and then the, the parents have this vision and they inspire the children to have this vision. So it depends on whether uh, the f children want to follow the, the vision. Transactional leadership at home would be like the parents say, okay, now if you do this, then I'll give you some reward. Now some parents, um, sometimes they might do it uh, you know, express the reward. Sometimes you just do it uh, without saying it. For instance, when the children obey them, then, then they would uh, treat them with certain gifts or certain things uh, when they, the children obey them. Charismatic leadership means in the home is that the, uh, the, the parents have the charisma that influence the children. The children, children are attracted by his charisma, his personality and then are attracted to follow him. And then transformational leadership at home would be that the parents uh, change the lives of the children. And autocratic leadership, that means the, ch uh, the parents uh, tell the children what to do, you must do this. Uh, if not, there will be punishment. So it's absolute rule. Bureaucratic leadership at home would be like uh, uh, if you want certain things change, you want to buy certain thing, you have to go through a procedure. So you have to uh, apply for, uh, for instance, you want to buy a bicycle, okay? You have certain procedure before we can buy you a, a bicycle. And a democratic leadership, that means that the parents would uh, let the, uh, everyone vote or talk about what they want to do. And least fair leadership means that um, parents just uh, let them do whatever they want to do. So think about this and think about what style of leadership do you have uh, in your home, in your church, in your place of work, and among your friends. Okay, now we talk about the visionary leadership here. The visionary leaders inspire others to work toward a vision for the future. So he has a vision and he inspired the followers to follow the, the vision. 
Now, for instance, I am a visionary leadership uh, leader that I want to inspire you to have the heart to, uh, to uh, raise up the spiritual life of people, to have a heart to bring revival, uh, to have a heart to, to prepare the people for the, coming, uh, the second coming of Jesus Christ. So I have this quality of a visionary leader that I have visions. Uh, wherever I serve, I give people visions. And then the pros of visionary leaders is that they will inspire and motivate others with their vision for the future. So they will inspire the other people and then they encourage creative thinking and innovation by challenging the status quo and promoting new ideas. So they encourage the people to have creative thinking and innovation and new ways, changes, by challenging the status quo. The status quo means the present condition. He will challenge, help the people uh, uh, to challenge the present condition. Are we, uh, do we have to follow this? Do we have to follow the, uh, what we have now? Uh, can we change? And promoting new ideas. And then the cons of visionary le leadership is that they can face difficulty communicating, communicating their visions, the grand vision, uh, which can result in misunderstanding or confusion among team members. That means they have, you know, so the problem, actually this is like the problem of a visionary leader. He might have problem communicating the vision to the followers, that these followers are not willing to follow that, that vision, that, uh, so that's a difficulty. And then visionary leaders may also establish ambitious goals that can be challenging to achieve, potentially creating pressures and f fostering unrealis unrealistic expectations. So a problem is that they could establish uh, goals, goals that are too ambitious that the followers cannot follow, that is too challenging to achieve, too difficult to achieve. And then also will create pressure for the people and also will foster, uh, will bring about unrealistic expectation to expect that, oh, all the Christians will become zealous for the Lord, all the Christians will love the Lord and everyone will be ready for the second coming of Jesus. So that un unrealistic, now, even though I want every Christian to be revived, revived, I know that not everyone has the heart to be revived. Many Christians just have the heart to get what they want from the church. They don't want to give to the church, no matter how much we, we help them, encourage them. Because as Jesus said, there are four kinds of soil. Then there are some soils that are uh, affected by the, the worries of the world and the love of the world, and then, and then also the flesh, so they cannot follow this uh, vision, okay? So the required qualities of a leader of this, of this style, of the visionary leader, so what qualities does he have to have? That he needs to have workable and biblical visions. So the vision should be from the Bible and also workable. Now, if a pastor says, I just want to have a big church, now, big church doesn't necessarily mean that's what got, uh, that's uh, biblical because, um, because sometimes um, the church might have goals that are, they just want number, they just want money. Now, the Bible doesn't talk about just number and money. The Bible talks about have, helping the people to love God it's not just getting large number. Of course, we want to get a uh, large numbers, but the first goal is that the people love God, and then they are building up a biblical church, a church following the guidelines of the Bible. Uh, so we should have visions that are from the Bible, and then he needs to be able to pass the visions to the followers and help them to catch the visions. So we need to pass this on to the people that they all have this vision. Yes. We want to, like for instance, I try to motivate you to be motivated by grace. That we enjoy praising God. We enjoy loving God. We enjoy serving God because 
we know that from the Bible that this is what the, the Lord is pleased with, that he, he is delighted when we love God and He will bless us greatly. So I'm trying to motivate people to have this uh, vision. So I want to be able to pass this vision to you. And I hope that you really have this vision, that you, you want to live out, you know, uh, follow the, the, uh, the grace of God, to be motivated by the grace of God. Now, once in a while, sometimes when I see your writing, I see that some of you just, you know, in, a, in your assignments, in your, uh, uh, what you wrote, the messages you wrote to me, I saw that you were trying to motivate people with the law instead of grace, instead of saying, God is full of grace and uh, uh, preparation and gifts and prep and uh, provision so that we can follow His plan. And whenever we follow His plan, He's very, very happy. So we want, I want to pass these visions to you, and I hope that you can catch this vision. Three, be sympathetic of the followers if they cannot catch the vision and be helpful to them. So be sympathetic that you know that all not all people can catch the visions immediately so that some people could have problem following the vision uh, so we want to be sympathetic of the people be not harsh with the people who cannot follow the visions and not to be harsh if they cannot follow the vision so how does this work at home if you have visions at home how do you how do you help your children your your spouse to have this same vision uh, certainly not by nagging them, not by forcing them, but by telling them that when you live in the love of God, then God is very pleased with you. God is very happy with you. So how does it work at home that the people feel you know, we are one family, that we want to reach this vision together? Then the, the visionary leader is able to lead, her, to lead the family. In the place of work, how do you inspire other people to have this vision? And in the church, to inspire the, as many leaders and the members as possible to have this same vision, to have a church that is strong in the Lord, to be pleasing to the Lord, that God is pleased with us and bless us and bless the church. And then also in friendship, that we motivate our friends uh, so that they will also have this same vision. So we need to have these uh, qualities. Now let me go back to the eight styles of leadership briefly and then think about what leadership style you follow mainly. So the first kind is visionary leadership. Uh, the visionary leader want to give lead, uh, visions to the followers. Transactional leadership, that means they give uh, rewards uh, when I uh, tell them, okay, if you finish this job and, and then you will get certain rewards and then, or they just give them certain reward without telling them. So that is like a transaction, charismatic leadership that the person has this charisma. Now, some people thought that speaking loudly and jumping around is charismatic. It's not necessarily true. Charismatic means that we have this this strength, this uh, personality that can influence people. It's not just by speaking loudly. Uh, it's not just by, you know, certain actions. We jump around and then people will catch the vision. It's not necessarily true. And then transformational leadership, that means we want to transform the people. So are you this style? Which style are you? Autocratic is by force. You have to follow me. Now, I have met a number of pastors who are autocratic. They just want the followers to follow them. Uh, very strict. Bureaucratic, just follow rules of the church. They have to have uh, the rules of the organization. And democratic, to um, discuss with the people what is best for the church. And Lucifer is freestyle, whatever style. Now, I would encourage from the Bible what of this, which of this style are the most, uh, uh, the best would be visionary to have the vision 
and have the charisma that we have this personality this strength from the Lord the joy of the Lord the love of the Lord that we have this charisma to influence other people and transformational leadership that we have this ability to transform the people's spiritual life and also democratic that we can discuss with the people to find out uh, what is best uh, how we can um, you know to to that people discuss together and pray together to find uh, the uh, the purpose of God in the church so I hope that you find out what style you are and I also uh, ask you in your uh, the leader group in the whatsapp group that you tell me what style you are what styles do you do you use in your um, life in your ministry in your family okay now we have talked about the first one uh, the visionary and then we go to the transactional leadership that the transactional leaders use social exchanges to influence others to achieve their goals so they exchange them with something for instance they might promote a position in a church or they might give them gifts or or sometimes encouragement could be encouragement too so the pros these leaders establish clear expectations they have expectation goals and performance performance standards ensuring ensuring that <coughs> others understand what is expected of them thus promoting accountability so they need to have this they need to have clear clear um, expectation from the people and they have goals and performance standards that what uh, how the people are expected to perform ensuring that others that understand what is expected of them and promote the accountability that they would do it and then they are accountable and then they use rewards and recognition to pro uh, motivate and incentivize the, the team members fostering productivity and performance so use reward or recognition recognition means that they will recognize what they've done or they would praise these people for what they've done to motivate and incentivize them to motivate them uh, to to, uh, to have more productivity and performance okay now this also works in a place of work okay I heard that some of you are nurses <coughs> or doctors so the uh, the first one visionary that you have this vision of the of a, 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 a clinic now what kind of vision would a clinic have is that the clinic would be able to serve people that the people feel loved and care, cared for and uh, that they uh, that the people will listen to them so these are ways that we can um, that we have this vision to uh, motivate the people that they will follow this vision and transactional leadership that means uh, in the place of work would be like if you do certain things then you'll be promoted or you have certain bonuses that will be given to you when you uh, uh, when you do the certain things okay the cons this type of leadership primarily focuses on maintaining existing processes and achieving established goals needless to say this can potentially stifle innovation and creativity within, within the team so this kind of leadership primarily focus on maintaining the existing processes the way of doing things now and achieving certain goals and then this can potentially stifle that it, it can block innovation uh, that means creativity uh, to create new ways uh, within the team new ideas to that it will uh, s discourage new ideas the transactional approach of this leadership style can also lead to a lack of personal and professional growth opportunities for team members so the team members just want to do something and then they will be rewarded uh, then they might not look for the professional growth 
that how can they uh, improve professionally. For instance, in the church, okay, they just want to bring a certain number of people to Christ, uh, build up the cell group, and then they think that th then they have achieved the goal, and then they, they don't think of how to improve the ability to serve God, how to serve God better. So that could be the cons. Okay, so required qualities of a transactional leader that he needs to have clear expectation, he has clear goals and performance standards, what he expects of the people, and also the rewards and recognition, how he will reward them and recognize them. And he is able to motivate the followers to follow, that he can motivate them to follow. How does this work at home, in the place of work, in church and in friendship? Okay, at home, now the parents might, for instance, when the children obeys, when the children obey him, then they might give them certain gifts or hug them, uh, say something nice to them. So that's something that uh, a transactional parent would do. In the place of work, the boss will give certain gifts or reward to the followers, to the workers, and in church, that the, uh, the leader would give rewards or recognize the, those who serve well. Now, so this is uh, it's good in some way that people are rewarded. Uh, they are encouraged. They are recognized for what they do. This is the good point of the transactional leader. And then in friendship, that people would, um, in a, uh, that they would, when the friends do some things well, then they would do something, uh, reward the friends. So that's something that could, could happen in a friendship. Okay, charismatic leadership.